This, this, this subcommittee has amazing members, but I'll tell you what, for me, it's always a special honor to be able to recognize not only the uh, Chairman Emeritus, the former Chairman of the subcommittee, but the Dean of the House, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for arranging this uh, hearing with the Secretary and running it. Uh, and, Ms. Secretary, we're delighted to see you. Uh, we thank you for your service, and we pray for your safety. Um, fentanyl overdose is now the number one killer of adults ages 18 to 45, destroying families, ruining lives. We've got to find a way to stop it. We know China and the Mexican cartels are the primary drivers of the problem. The Chinese shipped the precursor chemicals to the Mexican cartels, who are then producing the pills and trafficking them through our borders. It seems that despite Beijing enacting new laws in 2019 to outlaw the export of fentanyl and its precursors, these efforts have not actually been uh, enforced. Has China taken any sort of meaningful action to try to stop the export of these deadly drugs? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's very good to see you here as well. Um, and uh, two things. First, I wholeheartedly agree with you on the um, urgency, uh, the priority that uh, we have to place and we are placing on synthetic opioids and fentanyl. We see it devastating community after community in this country. Forty percent of Americans know someone who died of an opioid, opioid overdose. Um, and as you point out, it's the number one killer of Americans age 18 uh, to 49. Uh, it has a domestic component, and the President has put more money into uh, dealing with the domestic side of this in terms of prevention, in terms of treatment, in terms of recovery, in terms of public awareness uh, than ever, and that money is getting to the communities that need it. I've seen it firsthand in Denver and Tucson and other places I visited. Uh, but for us uh, at the State Department, we're working hard on the international side. And with regard to China, in um, uh, December of last, uh, last year, late November of last year, the President met with um, President Xi Jinping. Uh, in San Francisco at the APEX Summit. And a big part of that meeting and a big part of the work that we had done in the lead-up to that meeting was to get an agreement from China to take uh, more effective action against fentanyl and particularly against the chemical precursors that are made uh, in many cases in China, as then, as you said, get shipped over uh, to Mexico, synthesized into fentanyl, and then into our country where Americans are killed. Uh, China has taken important but uh, not yet sufficient steps to make a real difference in curbing the flows. It promulgated new regulations. It took down some companies that were engaged in this practice. It established a regular working group with us so that we can track progress. I was just in China uh, a few weeks ago, and among others, I met with the Minister of Public Security on this question. And there are steps that we believe China can and should take now uh, to really make a dent in the uh, flow of these chemical precursors. Uh, very public law enforcement actions particularly to uh, arrest, prosecute, and convict those who are engaged in this uh, illegal transfer of the, uh, of the precursors. That would, I think, send a very strong deterrent message. Actually scheduling uh, certain precursors that they've agreed to, to schedule th and thus restrict, um, but have not yet done. And then there's a, a nexus that we've seen between some uh, enterprises in China, a financial nexus between them and the criminal enterprises in, for example, Mexico, that needs to be cut. And there, we believe that China needs to take action to, uh, to do exactly that. So we are tracking this very, uh, very closely, very carefully. I think we've seen progress, real progress, but it is not yet sufficient. And we want to see that the flow of the precursors continues to come down. Well, we're all keeping an eye on China and what they're doing, or more importantly, what they're not doing to uh, keep the fentanyl from reaching our kids and our adults in the U.S. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, they're doing all that they can. In fact, I know that that's the case. Your budget proposal, you're asking $1.56 billion for international narcotics control and law enforcement. 
that's a $166 million increase over the fiscal 24 enacted level. How do you plan to use those funds to uh, help end this ongoing tragedy? One of the most critical things is continuing to build the capacity of, of partner countries as well as to uh, strengthen our cooperation with them. I think Mexico is a good example of that. We've significantly increased our collaborative efforts over the last few years with Mexico to try to disrupt, dismantle, uh, take down these, tran uh, these transnational criminal organizations that are engaged uh, in trafficking, as well as to deal with the uh, financial networks. Um, we have worked with them, for example, uh, with information and support uh, that's produced dozens of arrests of first and, and second tier uh, operatives in these uh, criminal enterprises. Uh, they've seized a record amount of fentanyl. Uh, they've disrupted production facilities. But all of that comes with our assistance, our support. So this is just one example of where the additional funds would allow us to further strengthen their own capacity to deal there. Second, the border itself. Um, very important that we deploy the most modern and effective technology in detecting uh, efforts to smuggle uh, fentanyl or other synthetic opioids into the United States. We have the technology. It's both um, the old kind, things like canines can be very effective, but also uh, actual technology, screening technology. Uh, and we've seen that um, based on our best assessments, the overwhelming majority of the fentanyl that's coming into this country is coming through uh, our ports of entry. Uh, and so deploying that technology on both sides, the Mexican side and our side, that can make a big difference. Um, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We're gonna, I, I hate cutting off the dean, um, 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 but, uh, but I, if, I apologize, but I feel obligated to do so, Mr. Chairman. If you insist. 